Most of you know by now, about a week ago, Yoel Romero was released from the UFC. Today, it was made official that Yoel will be heading to Bellator. Ariel Helwani tweeted Yoel Romero is headed to Bellator. Romero has agreed to a new deal with Bellator. He's expected to sign imminently. He'll debut for the promotion in 2021 at 205. His debut date and fight are not set yet. He followed up with initially Bellator officials passed on Romero. However, after further talks last week and with a new chapter at 205, the two sides were able to come to an agreement very recently. As you guys know, Anthony Rumble Johnson has also signed to Bellator recently. If those two end up fighting, who do you guys think gets the W? Let us know your predictions in the comments below. A few days ago, SBG Port announced that they will be closing down the gym due to the pandemic. They posted this to their Instagram. In the caption, they wrote, Tonight we close our doors in the gym for the last time. Unfortunately, we are forced to shut our gym down. To say I'm heartbroken is an understatement. The COVID pandemic has been tough on all of us and we can no longer keep the gym going. Due to mounting rent bills during lockdowns, we just can't sustain. Conor McGregor has stepped in and the gym will now remain open. They posted this as a follow-up. In the caption, they wrote, From the lowest low to the highest high. We are not closing. Our teammate and friend Conor McGregor has decided to help us out and keep the gym running. We will be eternally grateful. Recently, Dana White has revealed that there's going to be over 60 fighters cut from the UFC roster in the upcoming weeks. Cub Swanson, after his KO victory over Daniel Pineda, says that it crossed his mind that he might be cut if he lost. It crossed my mind that if I didn't have a great performance, you know, I, I, go, I come out here, I get kicked in the leg a couple times, I fall down and, and can't continue and you know, it's a, you know, another loss that I, I, it crossed my mind that, you know, maybe I'd be one of the guys. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's always there. This is, you know, this is the business of, uh, of, you know, you know, the best of the best and you got to prove that you're, you're there. So, uh, that, that was on my mind. Um, but I, I just, like I said, I, I, I really just wanted to focus on coming out there, coming out here and, and, you know, putting on my best for performance. And I wanted to, to make sure that those other things, those dis little distractions, you call them, uh, weren't seeping in my head. Kevin Holland discusses his win over Jacare Souza at UFC 256. He also speaks on a potential fight with Hamza Chamaya. You know, and uh, it worked out. I was, I was really, uh, I'm happy the way it worked out, but I hate that it had to be Jacare that I did like that, you know? Legend right there. I seen the eyes roll, but I was so unintuitive into it that I just wouldn't stop until the ref pulled me off. And that's what that's what I love about this sport. You get to go all in until they stop you. You did mention Hamza Jumaev as someone you wanted to fight. Yeah, so yeah. you're to fight next week. Yeah, I'll do it. And he doesn't have a reputation for fighting all the time. That's just what all the casuals think, that he fights all the time. He fought three times this year, two times against Bum, and then another time against Gerald Murchard. Gerald Murchard's not a bum, but he was coming off a knockout. He hasn't beat anybody in the UFC with the win, but at the same time, He's a good ticket for the UFC, so let me stop talking about somebody who can help us make money, right? Do you want to fight him because of that hotel interaction you had a while back? I mean, yeah, that would that would make it a uh, that makes it a little bit more sweet, right? But you know, everything I know about fighting, so. Chael Sonnen and Michael Bisping on the Believe You Me podcast discuss Anthony Johnson signing with Bellator. They also speak on the potential fight between John Jones and Israel Adesanya. Rumble Johnson making the news again this week. He's been flirting about coming back to the UFC for a long, long time now. And then it came out this week that he's actually parted ways with the UFC and he's signed with Bellator, which yeah. is, which is um, I don't know, it's... It's a shame, if you ask me. Rumble Johnson, one of the hardest hitting guys, great fighter, took some years out of the sport. I was really excited to see Anthony Johnson back in the UFC. I mean, good for Bellator and good for the UFC. You know, it seems like they're, well, they're letting people out of the contracts. You know what I mean? They're, they're, yeah. If people ask them, they're, they're not holding them, you know, with a gun to their head and saying, no, we've got you bad contract. If you want to go to Bellator, then f it off your pop. Hear me out on this, because all of MMA, as you know, whether it's Coker, whether it's Dana, whether it's somebody off, all has the idea that you bring a guy in, you sign him to a minimum three fight contract, that you have a whole year's plan and here's he's gonna go in this direction. We tell stories in MMA, other sports aren't like this, but this is what MMA is. Hear me out. What if Bellator changed the way they were thinking? What if instead of doing a three fight deal and bringing a guy in for the next year, 18 months, what if it was just a one off? What if they just signed Romero and Johnson, oh, by the way, and have them fight each other? That sounds like an interesting match to me. And Michael, I think right now in this time, 
you have Anderson Silva on the table. I mean, you have a few guys where maybe they don't have three or four or five fights. Maybe they don't have a year's story, but they have something special right now tonight. Jones came out this week uh, with a very interesting quote. He said, the part of the reason I'm going up to heavyweight is because a light heavyweight, they don't scare me there. And, you know, I don't I don't get intimidated. And as you know, Chael, you do need that factor. You know, it keeps you on edge. It gets the adrenaline going. It gets you in the gym. And he said he was rather complacent for those reasons because nobody at light heavyweight intimidated him, which I understand understand that because you know he was so dominant for so long you're the only person Chell, that stepped in the ring with john jones how do you see that fight going down between adesanya and uh, uh jones you gotta think jones with the wrestling correct sure well, you know i'm a big believer in adesanya right now he's got a lot of hype around him yes john jones the big problem used to be he would just throw everybody down and then beat the hell out of you he's taking less and less guys down he had a really hard time uh, you know, with Reyes, just by example, who isn't a decorated wrestler, but has some pretty good hips. And I only bring that to you because if John does digress a little, then Adesanya uh, continues to progress a little bit. Don't forget, Adesanya is never going to weigh 205 pounds. Isn't even going to try. He, he weighs about 193. He plans to not gain any weight, get in there about 193. I mean, that's that's a, a dangerous proposition. I think Adesanya is up against it. But uh, that's the fight I want to see, man. That is the biggest fight the sport can make right now, in my opinion. Dana White reacts to the current antitrust lawsuit against the UFC. Dana says that he knows nothing about it. Do you have? I any literally comments? know nothing about it. <laughs> so do you I mean, literally know nothing, not one thing. Potentially, I think they could be like four billion dollars worth of damages awarded. I mean, does that concern you at all with the not future even a little of the company? Bit. It concerns me so much that I don't even know anything about it. Darren Till reveals that he broke his foot this week. He posted a photo of it on his Instagram. In the caption, he wrote, wrestling is fucking tough, but it is needed and essential for MMA. You want to stand up and smash your opponents, you need amazing wrestling defense. You want to take them down and smash them, submit them, or whatever, you need amazing wrestling. Don't forget your wrestling, kids. P.S. I broke my foot this week, but more wrestling tomorrow again. James Vick reflects on currently being on a four-fight losing streak. He posted some training footage to his Instagram. In the caption, he wrote, I may be on a losing streak and my career has went to shit in the last couple of years, but I swear I have never felt better from a technical standpoint than I do right now. I have found the right people and worked so hard to fix these problems of dropping my hands and leaving my chin in the air. No technique will ever be perfect in a live fight scenario, but I cannot wait to show the improvements I have made in this area. Fight news coming soon. New year, new me. Here's the footage. TJ Dillashaw posts some new training footage to his social media. As most of you know, TJ's suspension is coming to an end soon in 2021. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up for the news. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post future ones. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one says, No wonder Junior Dos Santos is still fighting even when getting knocked out by the touch of a finger on the chin. 420k in the bank. I'd get knocked out weekly for that. The second one says, I know Jacare hasn't been impressive lately and that he will likely get cut, but he deserved more money than that. The final one says, I've seen bad tattoos before, but the samurai helmet on Kevin Lee is straight stupid. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured on the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. Also, be sure to check out the other types of MMA content we post on this channel. Click either of these two videos on the screen right now.